So let us talk about spanning tree protocol states of the different ports. So first is disabled and this is when a port is shut down. The second one is blocking. And for example, when spanning tree has decided that this particular port is going to be put in the blocking state. So in this state, it is not forwarding frames, but it still receives BPDUs. So it's able to calculate spanning tree. Listening, it's not forwarding frames, but it's sending and receiving BPDUs. Learning, you're not forwarding frames. You are sending and receiving BPDUs, but you're learning new MAC addresses. And then for forwarding is full um, operations. You're forwarding frames, you're sending and receiving BPDUs, and you're learning new MAC addresses at the same time. So the spanning tree topology will change under certain conditions. For example, a new switch is introduced, it could end up being the root bridge, um, or a switch fails, or a link fails, or a link that failed comes back online, or a new link is introduced. So now let us look at root bridge placement. Using default STP parameters might result in an undesired situation in that traffic will flow in non-optimal ways or an unstable or slow switch might become your root bridge. So you need to plan your assignment of bridge priorities carefully. And let us look at an example. We have four switches in this network your distribution switches are switches B and D at the top and on bridge switch D you have a link out to your core router and then switch A and switch C are your edge switches or your access switches and this is where you connect end nodes which are the ones in blue. The bridge IDs are given in the diagram, the priorities are the, are the defaults and the MAC address is what is going to pick what the root bridge is. In terms of links, switch C and switch A both have links to both B and D. And switch B and D, of course, are also interconnected with a cable. But because of the MAC addresses, switch A has been picked as a root bridge. So the links which have dotted lines are on ports which have been set to blocking state. So the only active links are the bold ones. So if you have a node in switch C sending a packet out to the router, it's going to bounce to switch B, then bounce down to switch A, then up to switch D, and then out through the port that's going to the router. What you'd want instead is to set the priorities, and these are some examples. So instead of the default 32768, you set the bridge priorities for your distribution switches to 1228 for switch D or 12K, and 16K, uh, 16384 um, for uh, switch B. So that switch B is your alternate route and your root bridge is switch D. It even allows you to have a second link to the core router on switch B in case switch D fails. But if we look at that packet that comes from switch C going out to the router, now because switch D is the, is the root bridge, the packet will go straight to switch D and out into the core. The dotted lines would be the disabled, the ports, the the links which have ports that are put inside a disabled state. So to protect the spanning tree topology, some vendors have included extra features and you can investigate turning them on. For example, root guard, which will tell the switch uh, that the root can be on particular ports and not on other ports. BPDU guard is where the switch will drop BPDUs that it receives on certain ports. Um, loop guard is 
a way to detect and it works together with UDLD. It's a way to detect an error where a port is up but it's not receiving BPDUs. So a port that is in the blocking state is it can it can sense that there's a link so the link is active but it is not receiving BPDUs. So ideally without loop guard it would assume that the switch on the other side is dead and it moves to forwarding and it could potentially create a loop. So loop guard prevents that. UDLD, which is also implemented in Ethernet OAM, is a way if you have, for example, fiber links and uh, the links usually come with two pairs, one for transmit, one for receive. And it's possible for a problem to happen on just one pair. So you have an error in one direction. So either it's the transmit is working and the receive is down or the receive is working and the transmit is down. So UDLD will detect this and it will not attempt to move a port from blocking to um, forwarding. And there are others.